busy month for Penn State football. Things heating up on the recruiting circuit. Of course, Penn State got a uh, commitment earlier this week, but that came out of a junior day. There's another one coming up this weekend. So plenty of news going around in the Penn State recruiting circle. And, of course, more coming up. And that's what you got these guys for. The preview, what's going on, who you need to know, the names, the names, the names. So many names floating around this time of year. We're going to get to all of that today. Uh, But the first thing... Ryan Snyder and Sean Fitz here on the show, recruiting insider extraordinaires. Big news in the Big Ten, Jim Harbaugh officially the Chargers head coach. So um, I have an interesting question for the fans, but I just want to get your thoughts first before we get into that on uh, how this changes or doesn't change uh, the the power rankings in the Big Ten. Ryan, how do you think that this affects you know kind of the momentum that Michigan had and the recruiting momentum, especially that they had recently? Uh, recruiting momentum. I mean, I don't know, Sean. I mean, they, they pretty much have been recruiting as they have been. I wouldn't say like there was a drastic uptick after national championship or even multiple big 10 championships. I mean, they consistently kind of stay in that, you know, obviously Ohio state's at the top, Oregon will be at the top now. And, and really Penn state, Michigan have always kind of been floating in that 10, 20 range, usually top 15 or so. So I mean, I don't think Harbaugh's really even been out on the recruiting trail much over the last couple of weeks. I think everybody kind of expects Sharon Moore to take over, and I would expect most of the staff to stay intact. So that's a good thing as far as current, uh, you know, keeping the roster together and and keeping the momentum that they have with select players together. At the same time, I know Sharon Moore obviously had a a good debut showing in in some some interim uh, games and all that. But long term, you know, that's that's going to be the big question is, is if he is the guy you know, can he, can he keep that level? And of course they're going to lose a lot of talent this year too. So Michigan's going to take some sort of a step back. Yeah. Fitz does with all that combined, I guess, how do you view the, the ever present race in the big 10? Yeah. I mean, I don't think it changes all that much. I think, you know, even if he stayed, they're going to have a, a little bit of a drop off in talent. Uh, you're losing a starting quarterback who's played a lot of football. And anytime you do that, I mean, you're going to have not start from zero because it's a talented roster, great staff, but you're going to have a situation where you have to do some sort of reset there. So I think that that hurts uh, from a recruiting perspective. Maybe some of the national appeal is a little bit lower. I mean, they, they went after a certain breed of kid, and you saw that during their championship run. There is uh, the guys with the backs against the wall, that whole mentality, everything like that. That doesn't work for everybody. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that goes with a different guy. Of course, Sharon Moore, very well respected, but does not have that national brand name that Jim Harbaugh had. So I think maybe, and I, I think we're talking on like levels here, like mm-hmm. a step back is what, like, do you notice all that much? Um, does that, uh, does that do that much? I, I don't know, but yeah, I, I think there will be some sort of step back. Somebody no- mentioned Notre Dame in the chat. I mean, Notre Dame's still a national brand, but yeah, they've, they've taken a step back as well. So, and when you're talking a 12 game season is a step back making going from 11 and one to 10 and t- 10 and two, that can make all the difference in the world. So yeah. Um, I, I do see that happening, but Michigan is still Michigan. It's still a great brand. Uh, Moore is going to do the thing where they circle the wagons even more um, as if they haven't circled them enough over the last couple of months. Um, so that's going to be something. It, it, it's going to be interesting, an interesting juxtaposition between what happened with Nick Saban leaving and what happened with Harbaugh leaving, whereas they went outside, got Kalen DeBoer from across the country. You're keeping a guy in house. So that's going to keep a lot of guys in, uh, you know, from, from probably going to the portal. Um, you know, I think a lot of the guys that Alabama, like you look at those Alabama stats and a lot of guys that they lost were pre coaching change. So, and I think you're going to probably see about the same thing with, uh, with Michigan here. So it'd be an interesting thing to track this off season. It, it will change some things for Michigan, but they're still Michigan at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just an interesting, um, situation this late in the the cycle heading into February, I guess the fan, the, the question I had for fans, and I, I brought this up over on the Blue White Illustrated message board when all of this started a couple weeks ago. And I just, I find this as a fan of football, uh, as fans, you can put this in the chat. And, you know, if you're watching the show, put this in the chat. If you're watching on the replay, you can comment on the video. Would you rather have beaten Harbaugh before he left? I think that that to me, like I think back to Tom Brady in the AFC East. And sure, the Bills run the division now. They never beat Brady. And that bothers me to this day. So Penn State fans, would you have rather have beaten Harbaugh before he left? And does that bother you that he's getting away on top? Um, I think that that's, to me, that's always one of those things where it's like, uh, you talk about eras in college football. And the four-team playoff era, kind of a similar situation of Penn State 
didn't get into the 14 playoff era. So that's the thing that's you can't take that back. You can't go back and get that. So uh, if you have if you have any thoughts on that, drop that in the chat and uh, of course on the replay on the video, and we'll get to the best comments here on the show live. Uh, another thing we're gonna get to in just a little bit. A lot of recruiting news coming up today in terms of top eights, decisions, recent offers. That's coming up in just a second. But the first thing we need to tell you is uh, it's the middle of January. It's time for you to get better at football. If you have a son or you're a football coach, you want to give them an edge on the football field. Every split second and every move in the game matters. So train like the best by training with the best. MMA FX is a hand fighting course taught by Bruce Lombard of Lombard MMA in State College. It's the only comprehensive hand fighting program video set for football players available. Two hours of hand fighting and hand uh, speed techniques and drills. You can see it here on uh, the YouTube channel. If you're watching, Anthony Zettel, former all Big Ten defensive lineman, is uh, the person going through the drills with Bruce, a guy who has gone through MMA FX before. This is a comprehensive uh, program designed over years to take the best of MMA combat sports and apply it to football so that you can be an unblockable monster up front and you if you're watching this want to get scholarship offers you can help increase your chances or if you've got a team and you want to take it to the next level here's a great way to supplement what you do in the off season all kinds of programs have used this from the nfl to college the best programs not just the james franklin tree we're talking oklahoma washington florida purdue western kentucky penn state uh alabama all these uh, programs have gained an edge, so you should too. And the best thing is you get a discount on it, 15% off. When you go to LombardMMA.com backslash shop, use the promo code 15BWI to get 15% off of MMAFX. And if you're in State College, you can check out Bruce and you can talk to him yourself. Bruce at MMAFX.net is his email address to do some of the other programs he has for offensive linemen and stuff like that. Okay, so appreciate Bruce being a part of the show. We got some Penn State recruiting news, and uh, we're going to get to some of the things that I found uh, over at bluewhiteillustrated.com. I put the link to these articles in the, the video, so you can go check out these articles. We're going to start with Fitz. Um, some of the moves that have been made over the last couple of days with an update in the 24-7 on three composite rankings. Uh, guys that are moving up in the final rankings here for 2024. So what did you find with this latest update fits and you're on mute, just give you a heads up. Very well. Thank you for that. I had to yell at my dog for scratching on the bed here. Um, no, I, I mean, I think it's uh, the final release here. So after the all American games, after the final senior tape comes in, um, you know, it's actually, it'd be nice to do one in February as well, just because you got to cover everybody beyond the top two, four, seven, three on 300, Rivals 250, ESPN, whatever they call it now. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta move on there um, and 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 look at the three stars, look at everybody. But anyway, that's a rant for another day. But you look at what Penn State uh, had in the uh, awards, or excuse me, the All American season, uh, and Cooper Cousins just keeps moving up. Um, this is a guy that went to the All American game and he was top 10 overall performer by most sites. Um, most people that were watching it said, you know, probably the most dominant offensive lineman there, and that's saying something for a guy that was absolutely no drama was not a household name coming into this. Like if you were covering Texas, you probably hadn't heard of Cooper cousins for a couple of reasons there. And he went in there and, and, and did some great things and just has continued to rise up. I know rivals moved him up. I know 24 uh, seven moved him up on three is going to continue to move him up. I, I don't know where he's going to fall, but uh, I got some pretty good feedback from Charles power. Um, whenever our rankings come out, he'll be uh, he'll be moving on up as well. So I'm excited to see what Cooper Cousins can do. We're going to have that conversation probably 12 times between now and the start of spring <laughs> practice in terms of where he fits best in terms of yeah. center tackle, whatever it's going to be. Um, quickest pass to the field is going to be my answer to that until we get uh, something a little bit more solid. But uh, yeah, Cooper Cousins moving up. Uh, I think there's a couple other guys that are primed to go. I think John Mitchell um, was a guy that that that. Um, Close the season very strong. Like uh, he didn't do the under, he didn't do the All American games and things like that. I think he could have, could have hung there certainly. But uh, he's a guy that came in uh, to to Penn State in January, and I think he's uh, he he just helped. He's just a good football player. 
I mean, like the, we, we talk about arm length and all this kind of stuff. And that stuff, by the way, is important. Yeah, absolutely. But um, really good football player. Finds the football, four interceptions, four forced fumbles as a senior. Um, he's going to get the Zaki Wheatley treatment where, you know, that's what they're going to talk about whenever they talk about John Mitchell on the record. So um, he's there. Maybe some defensive line moves. Um, you know, I know I know Charles likes to, DeAndre Cook. I really like Xavier Gilliam. Like, mm-hmm. this is a guy that I was, I don't want to say out on a year ago, but like, Saw him at Under Armour. Ryan, you were there. Mm-hmm. He was okay. He, he was playing defensive end. He got a couple of reps at defensive end, and he was he was not anything that was spectacular. Seen him in camp a couple of times since then. Watched his senior film. Um, he's a guy that has a real possibility to be one of the better athletes on that defensive line, which is, is saying something. I'm not going to put him in the Zane Durant athletic category, but like same type of player. Yeah. Maybe a little undersized, which Zane Durant undersized is – just south of six one, maybe. Um, this kid's six two and a half. So like it, it it's it's all relative here. Better um, length too, right? I mean, I think that's length. another thing that people yeah. talk about with Zane Duran. It's not just that he's small, he's not he doesn't he doesn't have short arms, but he doesn't have that kind of prototypical length where Gilliam does seem to have those long arms that can lock out. Yeah, Gilliam's got a lot in terms of frame to work with. It's just it's it's deceptive. Like there are guys that are six two and a half that look like there's you know Devon Ellis is what he's listed six one I think like there are guys that are taller than they're listed and you're like huh I thought he was undersized but maybe he's not he came in at 275 pounds as well so like clearly headed for the interior of that defensive line clearly does not have to play this year mm-hmm. which is you know I don't, you're never counting on a freshman to step in there but you're bringing back Ellie's Beeman uh Izzard Durant I mean you've got uh, Vandenberg you've got guys that have played football before and that are basically just going to take over the same role that they had in 2023 so that defensive tackle room we're going to have the conversation in a year from now that it's uh you know it's a little more bare than we uh than we had in 2024 but until then uh and enjoy that wave because it's been a it's been a pretty good turnaround for Deion Barnes in that group yeah, the <laughs> there's going to be a lot of young talent, though. That's going to be the interesting thing is who rises through that, because it's kind of a pressure cooker right now with those guys sitting on top. And some of those young guys that have been in the program a couple of years maybe want to make a move. Do they have the ability to? It should be interesting to see how all of that plays out. Ryan, uh, another thing that came out this week, Ari Watford uh, chose Clemson. Um, we talked about this too early to say huge blow Zeher Mathis, Ari Watford, though, two area commits going elsewhere. I guess, how do you view this loss for Penn state? Real quick, circling back. I want to hit on one thing Sean said too, with, with Xavier Gilliam, I think that move to Quince Orchard was massive for him and it, it, whether it's coaching. Yeah. I don't, I don't know much about the staff at wild Lake, but I think maybe just the competition he's facing as well. Like you really saw, even from the first half of his film to the back half of his film, I thought you really saw a lot of growth there. And I, I just think that move was was incredibly positive for him and really help him, you know, down the road. And you know, obviously once he once he gets let me follow. And all that. I want to follow up on that because there's something uh, that forget what I said earlier. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep talking about this. Um, he came into two like listed at 280 on the roster, and Fitz mentioned that I, that was something what you guys said about him and kind of similar to Jalen Harvey in the spring and suddenly he's 280. Is that part of that going to Quince Orchard as he was able to develop also physically from that perspective and get closer to the body type that we were all expecting, I guess, from the beginning of when he was on the Penn State radar? I can't tell you that one way or the other. Yeah. Um, He's uh, obviously, I I think, and no disrespect, as Ryan said, to to, to his pri- previous school, but Quince Orchard just takes things to another level in terms of like prep and stuff. And also they play a style of defense that was kind of similar to what we saw with Manny's defense, where you you go get it, like you go after it. And I think that really helped him out in terms of like what he was able to do because um, he had really good film as a junior, but like you put it beside a senior film, a senior film kind of blows it away. So that was always the thing uh, with Gilliam is like, frame yeah maybe uh athleticism wasn't sure yet but he ended up checking that box um but the film the film is what got him across the line last year also Uh, like with gilliam gilliam didn't go to quince orchard until like what right before preseason it was like a move in june july so it's not like he was there training all off season and stuff i mean they hit the he hit the ground running they get in the the uh preseason camp and you know obviously they they work out during the season but it's it's nothing like it is in the off season so i mean he, he was already like 270 275 ish in the season so it wasn't a, a, a massive jump there but you know yeah. he, he is a little bit bigger now and then just to with cook like i mean cook's a guy we've talked to he's the lowest ranked guy in this class barely in the top 1000 I mean, he's he's absolutely a, a better 
better player than fringe top 1000 in my eyes. Where he ends up, we'll see. But, you know, he's a long, he primarily played defensive end, you know, has a lot of length and, you know, we'll, we'll see where things go. But you know, I've, I've thought for a while now that, that having him barely, what, 960 or something like that was, was way too low. Something here in the chat that uh, people have asked multiple times. Uh, Lambda asks the question outright, and I want to get your opinion here on the show. Think, do you think Cooper Cousins could push to start at center as a freshman, Fitz? Too soon to say is what I said in the chat. Um, I, I, I think he could. There's so much that go into that besides just, you know, being able to snap and block. Like the the yeah. calls are really what, uh, what makes it tough. And, you know, I think Penn State's had, what, one true freshman starter at center? And that was Joey Oreo, and that, that was when the, it was a different game. Um, so, mm-hmm. like, you're looking um, at a lot, uh, a lot on his plate. Um, so, I wouldn't be shocked if it if that was the event, if that was the eventual outcome. Sorry, I think I swallowed a bug or something. Um, so, I was trying <laughs> to talk. Um, but as of right now, too soon to tell. I would say I think I could see him getting some playing time. I wouldn't even be shocked if they if he rotated a guard at times. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I, I still think center when you look at the depth chart and. You know, bringing in Nolan Rucci is obviously massive, right? Because we've talked about tackle, we've talked about center. Getting Rucci for to, to in the program to to contribute to tackle, I think was was massive there. So I, I would lean towards center is where Cooper will start. But you know, Dawkins ha- does have experience, uh, multiple years in the program, knows how to do the call the calls. Obviously, he hasn't played a ton, but uh, I, I would still have to lean towards Dawkins as far as you know your, your starter at uh, West Virginia, which is what end of August, early September, something like that. Yeah, and uh, end of August. I was looking at something that seemed very wrong about the date, so I don't want to I don't want to put in any thoughts. The the thing and I think Fitz said this perfectly, like it's not just about being big enough or being able to snap the football. It's about understanding protections and calls and you have to be the leader of the offensive line as a center. And it's great to be, you know, he has all of those qualities, but does he it would be very very rare. It would be a very rare person who could step in and be a leader on an offensive line at 18 years old and play that position and have the mental capacity to pick all these things up and also pay attention to technique. Because as much as we talked about Cooper Cousins is a good football player and is super advanced in a lot of things, there are there are areas that I think he needs to get better before he's a, you know, a, a starting level player on the Penn State offensive line and throw everything at him all at once. Seems like that would be kind of a risky thing to do. You know, there's technique stuff and there's balance things that I think he can improve at. And to do that and to throw him in at center with all those responsibilities, I think might be that's just a lot. That's just a lot for any any 18 year old to have to take all at once. I'll Um, hit on Ari Wofford real quick. It just I'm not surprised by it. Listen, Ari Wofford was very quiet about his recruitment, but we, we knew Clemson was in there. He only visited Penn State once and then he informed. I think uh, it was oh last Thursday, you know, he informed me that that visit to Penn State likely wasn't going to happen, and then he he didn't give a, any additional follow up details on you know whether he's going to visit another school or whatnot. So there was a a hint then that Clemson might be in the in the pole position, but at the same time, like I said, he he never really opened up too much about his recruitment. So I don't want to overthink it. We'll we'll see. Uh, Penn State's not going to stop pursuing him. Neither will any other school. And you know, we'll we'll see what happens with Clemson here down the road uh, as far as you know how they perform next season and things like that. But I, I'm not I'm not shocked by the move, especially when he told me that that, that Penn State visit wasn't going to happen anymore. Uh this is from the Tuesday show. And Fitz wanted to bring this back because this is a great question in the BWI mailbag that we didn't have enough time to get to. Plus, it's a recruiting question, so it fits perfectly here before we get to our next segment, which this is from JWing25. New subscriber over to BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. Always want to point that out and welcome them to the site. You can join the site as well. Subscribe right now with P- promo code PSU1 for two months for just $1. Uh, so JWing says, which... Penn State 25 target or commit has the potential to jump the most in the rankings based on their junior year film or how you expect them to perform in camps this summer. That last part, I think, is also very interesting and very astute by J-Wing. So Fitz, I know you were you were excited to answer this question. So who you got on this answer? Let me pull that up here because that's uh, I got I had a list here and I just uh, there we go. OK, so um, there's there's a number of guys here because uh, junior film still coming out. And that's one of the things that we you know run across in like February. A kid will blow up and you're like, why is this kid just all of a sudden getting noticed is some kids don't have their film out yet, which is not not ideal, obviously. But uh, a couple of guys that jump out to me, um, I talked about 
Jameer Joseph on the show last week, the cornerback from New Jersey. Florida just offered him yesterday. I expect big, you know, big offers to continue to coming in there to come in. Um, he's right up there. I mean, Quincy Porter is really good um, in North Jersey. I think Jameer Joseph is right up there as well. Um, maybe maybe not quite there, but like he's a guy. We have as an eighty-eight right now. He's he's got to be a four-star in my eyes. Like he's a, a great film, a great versatile defensive back uh, that can stick at corner. I think he's fast enough to play at corner. Um, so that's uh, that's that's one guy that jumps out at me. Um, going back up to the top of my list, Matt Zollers is going to keep going up, and that's a that's an important one for Penn State. I know that they have a quarterback, but they want Matt Zollers, an in-state four-star quarterback that. There aren't too many of those that float around each cycle. So uh, big week last week, Florida, Georgia, um, you know, a couple of big offers that came in. So Penn State, uh, the price of poker went up there. So uh, Penn State's going to get him back on campus and, and continue to recruit him. Um, but uh, that's uh, that's one that I just keep seeing going up. Really athletic kid, throws the ball really well. Um, so much that I like about Matt Zoller's. Um, Hayden Bradley, the tight end from Georgia that Penn State offered a week ago today. Uh, since he has picked up a, a bunch of really good offers, Michigan offered yesterday. He's going to be at Penn State this weekend. Uh, this is a guy that I put on the film. So we, you know, we, we talked about him before he got offered on the at bluewhiteillustrated.com. Put on the film. This kid can block, this kid can catch, he can do a lot of things. Really good tight end. I still think Penn State goes to the Andrew Olish route um, at tight end. They were, you know, the Lincoln Cure is obviously top target for a lot of schools, especially Penn, uh, including Penn State. But Hayden Bradley is a guy that I think, you know, is probably going to end up a four star tight end when he was essentially, you know, Nobody knew about him uh, a week and a half ago. So um, that's good. Uh, Ryan, feel free to jump in anytime. I got a couple more guys, but uh, I need a drink right now. Malachi Goodman, right? Just got that Ohio State offer last night. Go ahead, take your drink. But uh, offensive tackle out of Paramus Catholic is the guy Sean and I both hit on multiple times on the message board. I, obviously, Penn State just got Owen Alessine last weekend. Big offensive tackle pickup. That's important, but they're going to need more. And Goodman is one of those few guys in the region that uh you know i think is realistic been on campus multiple times we'll be back here soon and feels like a somebody that they could they, they could get and right now 88 as a three star i'm not sure where exactly if he's an on 300 guy or whatnot but I, I do think a four-star prospect is realistic well that's for charles to figure out long term and then alex tash too i really want to mention the linebacker out of latrobe right now we have him as an 89 high three star i i think he's a four-star player I, I don't obviously usually uh those athletic linebackers are more so the top half of those, uh, you know, top on 300 kind of list. But I think he deserves recognition as a four star and rivals uh, gave him a four star not too long ago. And we're right on the we're right on the bubble there. Like I said, on three has him as an 89, which is uh, the highest three star you can be. If you look at the industry ranking, he is actually a four star because of that rivals rating soon recently. But uh, I think Tash is a guy that uh, we're going to be talking about a lot more here in the especially when we get the spring. Let's, now, at the same time, linebacker isn't a isn't a spring camp kind of position that you see those big bumps. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that we can add Ty Jackson in there. I know you've talked ah, about him before. That was my next yeah. one. <laughs> that was your next one? All right, yeah. go ahead. Take the floor no, for Ty Jackson. Well, it was funny because I was looking. I'm just looking at linebacker right now, and they're right next to each other. But I did, he he just visited last weekend, really hasn't gotten out there much because he's been incredibly quiet. But this is a player that – uh, just behind the scenes talking to different people that they are incredibly high on and we'll we'll see where things progress i got to try and get in touch with them that's the main thing because uh it's, it's been difficult to track down information on ty right now but uh 6 2 205 out of florida four he already has a four star rating by one three by the way so we'll see you know where where he where he goes long term but i just i just know he's a player penn state's incredibly high on that we haven't talked about a lot and just over the last couple of weeks, just his name continues to come up, continues to come up. And of course he visited last week. So hopefully we can track down some info. I don't have any, I, I haven't been looking at 2025. <laughs> Is that it? You guys, I, have, I mean, I have, that was a machine gun more. level. That was good. I, I have one more and it doesn't really count because I okay. looked up his ranking and I was like, oh, he's he's already highly ranked. Uh, Kanoa Winston, I put on his film the other day. If you want to have fun watching like a bat out of hell coming off and, and hitting somebody from safety position, Kano Winston's in there. Um, hey, obviously, you know, the, the Winston connection is big here, but uh, we have him just outside the top 100. He's probably top 100 player, even at his size, which is saying something at, at five ten and a half. And I know he's listed some places as six foot, but he's not, he's not, he's not his cousin. He's not, uh, you know, KJ is six, one and a half, six, two, you know, Kano is a little bit different, but he can run, he can hit. He's awesome. Uh, another thing that came out this week that I'm just curious about, uh, 
I, I think this is just more of a news and notes sort of thing. Trent Wilson gives his uh, his top eight schools here. Anything that surprises any of, any either of you about Trent Wilson having Florida State, Florida, Texas A and M, Maryland, Ohio State, Penn State, Oklahoma, and Tennessee in his top eight? Anything that stands out or is interesting to you about that list, uh, Ryan? Not really. He's visited most of those schools. Uh, he last. I think it was last spring he made a trip down south i don't know if oklahoma was one of them that's one i'm not, I'm not 100 sure on but ohio state maryland penn state just went to florida state or will he go to florida state this week but either way he's going to florida state here soon um you know I, I i that all makes sense to me i would think that some combination of those four schools will be in the mix i think penn state has a very good chance with him obviously had a good visit last weekend and uh we'll, you know we'll, we'll see where things progress i, I wouldn't be shocked if that list even changes a little bit as we progress here in the months ahead. Guys put out early lists all the time, and then you know we look at it three, four months later, and a new school here and there pops up. And yeah, the list, the list that different. matters is the official visits for those guys that make it that far. Mm-hmm. So, gotcha. Yeah, and that, that was going to be my next question: is like which one of those schools are are the most realistic outside of Penn State? But I guess we'll find the out as we go. Eric Eisler has a question here in the chat. I always appreciate people donating to the channel. Uh, you don't have to to get a question on the show, but if you do, absolutely, we're going to talk about it. How's our recruiting in Virginia? He asks. Seems like they have some great teams um, down in that area. Fitz, how has Penn State been recruiting Virginia? And I, I would imagine Marcus Higgins is going to be part of this conversation. So um, what's what's the situation there heading into 2025? Yeah, not as much Higgins as it is Dex and Cider. Cider does a lot of things in, in uh, uh, Northern Virginia. So even a guy like uh, Birchmeyer in t- the 23 cycle, like, you know, you, you've got Phil, you've got Ty Howell, but also, you know, Cider was a big part of, of a lot of those guys there. So um, it's been good. Like they were on a run where they were signing the top guys in Virginia basically whenever they wanted to in the last couple of cycles Uh, last year, probably calmed down a little bit. It wasn't a tremendous one, but I will say in Virginia last year, excuse me, I'm, I apologize for my voice today. I don't know what happened, but um, in Virginia last year, some of the talent really spread out. It wasn't so much located in that Northern Virginia area, but Richmond was good. Uh, Even down 81, uh, Chris Cole in Salem, you know, uh, Peyton Lewis in Salem, like there's, uh, Mm -hmm guys that were not in that general wheelhouse of Penn state. So they didn't, uh, didn't really, I don't think they got anybody from Virginia last year. So um, it was, uh, it was good. And now it's, you know, taking a, I don't want to say a step back, but that's just me riffing without even doing any, uh, any sort of uh, research here. So I think it's fine. I don't think there's anything to, to, to get uh, torn up about. I'm not sure how deep Virginia really is for 2025. Honestly, like when I look at the guys they've offered, when I look at the top 10 players and you you just compare it to previous years, I'm not saying it's not talented, but I just don't know it's on the level that maybe three, four years ago when they were really on that run that it's, it it was then, you know, like obviously Ari Watford, talented guy, Jalen Gilchrist, talented player. We'll, we'll, we'll see where things progress there. I mean, Clemson already has three commitments in that state. uh, When you add in uh, Easton Ware and uh, Gideon Davison, I mean, Isaiah Robinson, the Penn State really go after him all that hard. He's committed to Virginia. Yeah, I'm not really sure, so, so sure about that. Brett Clatterball is a good player. Is he going to end up at Penn State? Eh, I'm, I'm not. I think they they prefer Tash for that middle linebacker role. So, I mean, there's there's plenty of talent there. I just I just don't know if it's a state where like Penn State has to go all in this year. It's just I don't know if it's quite on that level. Yeah, I mean, there's some guys there. I mean, Masai Delone, they just offered uh, a couple of receivers. Matthew, Matthew Otten was there at the end of the season, uh, Trey Jones. So, like, there there are guys there that will certainly pop up and visit. Clemson's got three commits there, um, done pretty well, um, it, with with Watford being the latest. Caleb Williams um, uh, from Chesterfield, he's, uh, he's going he's to go to Virginia this weekend, I believe Tennessee next weekend. So um, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Shamari Earls, who's listed as a as a corner, but I mean, that kid could be an outside linebacker at some point too. So like, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's, uh, I think there's, there's a lot of talent. Um, but I think it's, I, I agree with you. I think it's structured differently than it was, you know, a couple of cycles ago when, when Penn state was doing really well. Yeah. Just like compared to 2022, just for example, I mean, there were what 12, four stars. Eh, actually, it's actually kind of comparable as far as four star rating, but it's early on. I'm just looking at like Zach Rice, Andre Green, Petaway, you know, some of those other names I just thought were, in my eyes, higher, higher caliber, but we, we'll we talk about that. We, we got seven, eight, nine, ten more months <laughs> to as, sort that out. As so. Fitz says, it's very early. 
is very yeah. early for, you know, and, and guys will crop up and we'll see more film and we'll do all of the necessary uh, follow ups. You guys will do uh, most of the necessary follow ups uh, because you're the best and that's what you do. Um, if you want to change your life, my perfect franchise. Andy Ludicky, we've talked to you about him here on the Blue White Illustrated uh, live show. This is, uh, he's a franchise consultant to help you place, uh, to place you in a business that you can manage and change your life to give you um, what it is actually the American dream, which is control over your future. Uh, I had a chance to catch up with Andy. We do this about once a year so he can give us an idea about what's going on in his world and things that we can talk about and give you a better idea of what you might be signing up for. One of the things he talked about and, and kind of got a little bit real this time with us is that he he does this himself he manages companies he's had to go through all of these things he's had to fire friends uh from businesses before so he can put you in all of these awkward situations in the conversations leading up to this to make sure that you're right for this so this is not somebody who's just trying to get you in and and uh and you know you know uh, pull the wool over your eyes about what the world you're getting into is he wants you to succeed so if you think you can manage a franchise, you can manage a business, you have those skills, or you want to challenge yourself and find out if you do, 404-973-9901. That's Andy uh, from My Perfect Franchise. Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net is where you go to email him, or you can go to the Blue White Illustrated message board, and you can talk to him there uh, on the message board because he's on every single message board because he loves uh, Blue White Illustrated recruiting. He loves recruiting in general. He's a Texas fan, but he's all over the place. So he has experience managing franchises and can teach you what you need to know. And his services are 100% free to go get a consultation. So check him out. Again, 404-973-9901. Appreciate Andy and his support here of the channel. We mentioned a couple of these things just a minute ago. New offers going out in January. New film players blowing up. Who are the names you need to know? It's coming up about the future of Penn State. There's a lot of excitement. This is a really, really important day to a bunch of young men and their families. So the best thing is uh, you can just go on Twitter and you can find all these names by just scrolling through Ryan and Fitz's uh, Twitter thread. But I've co collated all of them and put them here. The recent offers for 2025, 2026. Um, Ryan, anybody that stands out to you that you want to talk about on this list of most recent offers since you know the last time we talked about them? Well, there's definitely one, but if I don't let Sean talk about him, uh, he might fire me. So I already, got that one. <laughs> I already got that one in this week. Remember, we got my junior day thoughts in the first show this week, so we haven't we haven't gotten That's yours true. yet. Well, I mean, so I'll leave, I'll I'll let Andrew Alicia alone for a second. I he obviously tested really well. Sean, you you can expand on him a little bit more. I think Luca Gilbert grabs my attention just because he's a very highly rated prospect by on three right now. They have him as a number four ranked tight end in the country. Uh, let's see where that goes. As Sean brought up before, I think Olesh makes a lot of sense. It's somebody they could grab, and of course they're in, they're in the mix with Lincoln Cure too, who uh, I would still have as probably their their top tight end target, but uh, yeah. It, there, there's plenty of competition there as well. The Mike Peterson offer intrigued me just because of his father's ties to Florida. His, his dad's currently, uh, you know, part of Florida's coaching staff. So that that, that was interesting to me. I, I don't know if Cider or somebody has a tie there that I'd like to learn more, a little more about, because he doesn't have a ton of offers yet. Uh, be curious to see if they have some testing numbers and things like that I'm unaware of. But uh, he came up to last weekend's junior day, had a great visit, Penn State offered. Just maybe a player to, to keep an eye on if, if there are some some ties there. Messiah Delhomme, uh, Del, Delhomme, excuse me. You mentioned him, Sean, uh, the Virginia kid. He's a very highly thought of player. That, I, that speaking of someone who could possibly move up, you know, with on three, he is already a four star. But uh, man, some of the offers he's been picking up lately have been very impressive. Penn State's one of them. Let's see where things go there. I don't believe he has visited yet. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one, Sean. But uh, I don't think another, so. yeah, another guy who kind of stands out as far as like, oh, this this looks like a pretty pretty impressive prospect that's that's moving up right now but i don't know man how many offers have gone out since the beginning of january are we are we over like 50 now I mean, maybe not 50 but probably 40 ish i mean it's it's a big number they are hitting the ground running with this with this contact period and of course they can't talk to 2026 2027 guys they can talk to their coaches uh which is how all these offers are kind of being relayed uh but the, for the 2025 guys they are allowed to meet in person and that's why we're seeing a 
a lot of these offers go out. We've always seen them go out, but being able to have those one-on-one conversations, I think that'll that'll help them maybe get some of these guys on, on campus here down the spring. Fitz, who stands out to you? Oh, I guess we'll go with Andrew Olish. Um, yeah, the in-state tight end. I mean, that's that's one of those ones that you you hear the offer and you're thinking, okay, how how quick can I get the RPM pick in, basically? So now he's mm-hmm. going to go to see, I believe, Rutgers this weekend and Pitt next weekend. So you're going to see that happen. But, I mean, this is one of those situations where we've – I think we've seen this story before, and it usually ends up favoring Penn State. So um, athletic kid, uh, yeah, I think uh, there was a question, question in the chat about taking a couple tight ends. It's the right guys. I think they would, um, you know, kind of similar uh, to uh, two cycles ago um, that when they when they grabbed a couple of those guys. So it would be – Brady O'Hare is probably going to be a tackle. Yeah, yeah. Coach. I mean, I, I don't even really – consider him much to, uh, I, I just think fans probably see the commitment list and think yeah that's fair because he okay. is listed as tight end still Th- that yeah. is something that has been kind of a up in the air thing since he committed so appreciate you guys uh, bringing that up because it is yeah. something that you know it, it's a it's a little bit confusing at times yeah i think it's confusing i mean he's he obviously plays tight end at the high school level so you're you know and he, let's be honest like if you're a seven 16 17 year old kid and you have the chance to have the ball in your hand versus put your hand in the dirt, you're probably going to want to put the ball in your hand, even if the hand in the dirt is the better and potentially much, 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 much more lucrative opportunity for you. So, um, so I, I see that happening and, and it gives you some flexibility there. Like I know that he's got a tight end beside his name on the commit list, but like it gives you the opportunity to go out and recruit Lincoln cure, recruit Hayden Bradley, Luca Gilbert, they offered last week. So like uh, Penn state's not hurting on tight end recruiting. Uh, it's just a matter of how, how this is all going to shake out in the next couple of months. And uh, and, I, and I will say this, like Lincoln Cure is going to be a tough pull. Like he's yeah. Kansas State, uh, like is I don't want to say the runaway leader, but Kansas State is in a good spot. And Kansas State has had some coaching changes. Of course, Colin Klein went to Texas A and M, but Kansas State still seems to be in the top spot. So it'd be like you know an in-state kid for Penn State that you know is leading mm-hmm. from the start. It's tough to tough to get over that. Uh, Fitz talked about Aiden West earlier uh, in the week. Ryan, do you have any thoughts on another Quince Orchard uh, player uh, getting an offer quality, from Penn State? Yeah, quality player. I, I kind of just need to learn more on, on where he's at on the cornerback board before I could really expand on it. I, I think we hit on it the last – I think we answered a, a question at the last – at the end of the last show last Thursday. I said, yep. I said last Eric that asked it. They just asked about Virginia. Yeah. But, um, I mean, to me, it just seems like a lot – kind of – similar to Xavier Thomas in some ways. So just they're but he's, good- he's grown. He, he has grown. That's the thing. Like he's not five, nine and a half anymore. Like he's, okay. uh, you know, five eleven plus. So like okay. he's then, and that makes a difference, you know, the, yeah, the, it does. Like, and, and, but again, that tight end bar is very high, like very high. Cool. <laughs> and yeah. he's a, he's a tremendous player, but is he above that line? I don't know. So we'll see. Uh, the last name in 2026, don't expect you guys to have anything on this, but everyone loves when there is a former NFL connection, Thomas Davis Jr. getting an offer from the Nittany Lions here uh, for the 2026 class. So just some of the other uh, things to note and keep that, you know, put a pin in that for later down the line, see where that uh, ends up. Uh, the next thing we have is getting to it. Junior day number two is on the horizon these guys have been working hard to find out who's going to be here ryan has an article again i I linked it down in the video uh description so if you want to check out his list of players that are going to be here we're not going to talk about all of them we're going to talk about the names that are the most interesting and some of the ones that we uh, that are public so ryan i'll let you lead off here who uh is going to be at penn state this weekend that you have an eye on right now our list is at 38 players probably we'll get over 40 definitely we'll get over 40 uh, by the time Saturday rolls around, I'm not sure it'll be quite as deep as last week. Last week, I think finished just under 50. Uh, we'll, uh, at the same time, there will likely be players added here over the next 48 hours. But there's a couple guys we're, we're working to confirm. So should easily be in the low 40s. As far as the guys who stand out, I think you have to start with Michael Carroll just from the the ties that he has to Penn State and how, how quickly he has risen up the rankings. I mean, he made a massive jump from sophomore year to junior year and – the first time we really learned about that was when he camped at Penn State and the feedback we got from that last summer. Pesic was really impressed with just the the from a technique perspective and, and the little details uh, that he's been working on. And that's kind of what led to that offer. And then, of course, Charles Power, 
gave him a massive jump in the rankings as well, kind of comparing his sophomore to, to junior film. But he's the top guy in the state as far as offensive linemen go. I think Josh Williams is pretty good too. But, but right now, Carroll's easily the, the, the higher ranked player between the two. And uh, a player really, Penn State, I'm not going to say absolutely has to land, but uh, certainly a player they they want to make sure they're, they're signing next year. So Carroll absolutely stands out as probably one of the more important guys here this weekend. Fitz, any uh, anything you want to add here? Because I I'm having a hard time not drooling over what you see here on the film if you're watching on the YouTube channel. Some of this yeah. stuff is impressive. The film looks looks good. Um, like I said, his improvement in the last two years, credit to him, has done he he's done wonders for his future in terms of like getting better, in terms of getting where uh, where he needs to be and being aggressive. And he's a nice kid, but like you can see that aggressiveness come out. It's kind of like Cooper, you know, it's kind of like Cooper yeah. Cousins and. Uh, He's uh, probably one of those guys, and we talked about this in the show earlier this week. He's got the size to play tackle, but he's you know probably a, a best suited at guard, and that's a great thing if you can bring him in and, and put him at guard. And, and another thing, Michigan, one of his top target or one of his top teams. Like, so does the Jim Harbaugh thing have an effect on um, on Michael Carroll? I, it's it's no more than speculation right now, but certainly can't hurt uh, Penn State. I don't think so. Um, Carroll's a guy that, uh, that really jumps out to me. Taz Williams coming up from Texas, uh, wide receiver is a guy that has a lot of interest down there, which is, you know, kind of the, the thing that you look at when you're talking about out of, uh, out of region guys, like what level of recruiter they, uh, stars rankings may not be caught up at this point, but like interest usually is offer list lie, of course, but like, where's he visiting all these kind of stuff. Taz Williams is a productive player from Texas. Um, and everybody's always looking at wide receivers, even though they've sure. offered a thousand of them. So let me cut you off real quick. One thing with Taz that I don't think a lot of people know is he's from Pittsburgh. Yeah. He has a lot of ties to here. So right. I think, I think that's obviously you look at his, his profile, right. You see red Oak, Texas, but he's, he's very familiar with this area. Uh, I actually saw him at the, um, what's the camp in, uh, Pittsburgh two years ago, the evolve camp. The, Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. That was the first time I saw him out there. Very good player. And looks like he's, he's gotten even, even faster and, and a lot of different things have taken off for him. So remember his name because Got he, the Texas bump in speed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, he's gotten older, but yeah. um, just, just remember his name. He's, he's not a true Texas guy. He's, he's from the area. Yeah. It just seems like you, you go to Texas, you get a plus one in speed. Um, who else is on the list that uh, as a joke? Who, who else on the list? No, is, uh, I, it's not wrong. <laughs> no, it's not wrong. Yeah, I, I was like, yeah, yeah. I just hope he's eligible. No, um, anyway, uh, Hayden Bradley, uh, the tight end I talked about earlier from in the Atlanta area. Um, he is a uh, he's a guy I liked on film. Just to uh, put it on, I was like, wow, I did not expect this because his. Uh, I don't I don't even think he had Georgia Tech at this time last week. So mm-hmm. like this kid uh, can looks like he can play football. It's, it's a Buford like. Mm-hmm. Everybody can play football at Buford pretty much. And if you can start there, uh, you are probably going to end up being a prospect at some level. Um, so, uh, he's, he's a good looking prospect. I know Ty Hal, uh, went and see, saw him do a, like a basketball workout and he was pretty impressed with that. And that's pretty much par for the course in terms of what they've looked for, um, at tight end. And they've had success with it. Those athletic guys that are, you know, six, four, two fifteen at one point that are going to play at, uh, two forty five, two fifty, and keep some of that athleticism. We're going to see that. Uh, we're also going to see, um, uh, from Virginia this weekend. Is it, uh, Oh boy. It's uh, Matt Henderson. I want to call him Nolan Henderson. Matt Henderson, uh, is a guy that's uh six, five, one ninety five, plays receiver, a really good athlete as well. So like that, that is the mold that they've looked at for tight ends. I know it's, it's really funny that people get sick of, uh, tight end updates, but, um, Penn state recruits tight ends really well. So that's, uh, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with that. Uh, finally, defensive end Romano Johnson. Uh, someone asked earlier about the uh, DN board, and it's, I mean, it's not great. You look at the region right now, nobody's popped. Um, there's three guys that are really on the radar. I uh, so here, Mathis is going to Ohio State, uh, Ari Wofford is going to Clemson, and Cortez Harris is, uh, you know, still on the on the board as a, as a Penn State target. So they're going to probably have to look elsewhere. Now they've done a nice job getting defensive ends in the last couple of cycles. Um, so, like, is the is this a dire situation in January? Of course not. Uh, some will act like it is, but of course not. But uh, Romano Johnson, one of those guys in Florida that uh, Florida likes, Miami likes. So that's a that's a good start for uh, for Penn State to get him on campus. Yeah, good frame if you're watching here on the uh, on the YouTube channel. The the things that Penn State likes: length, 
frame, development potential all there for Ramondo Johnson. Maybe not as big. Do you think he's as big as uh, as a Malachi Williams? Just looking at him, I know you. We'll probably, find out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll find out. This is an opening salvo. <laughs> like I was gonna say, good frame, and then I was like, oh, eh, well, Malachi Williams look like a spider sometimes because he's so long. Um, who else is? Uh, I, I know there's a there's a 2026 player coming that is uh, a, a high level prospect. Who wants to take Albert Hill? I'll talk about him, Sean. That's fine. I mean, he's absolutely one of the best cornerbacks, I believe, in the country for this class. I mean, right now, I, I think he'll – obviously, there's so long <laughs> – after last week, Sean, I, I'm hesitant to say, you know, should it be a top-10 guy or whatever it may be. I, I, but I, I do believe he's going to end up being one of the most coveted, we'll say, uh, cornerbacks in the country for his class. And Penn State's done a good job getting him on camp, campus consistently. I believe this is – Gonna be what maybe his fourth time on campus already and, yeah yeah and ohio state of course is going to hold an edge there he's he's been up to columbus i believe six times now and yeah if you're making me make a pick today for this player i, I would probably have to lean towards the buckeyes they usually do a good job at keeping the best in ohio uh to, at home just kind of as penn state's done in, in pennsylvania in recent years so we'll see where things go but the relationship with terry smith is very strong and he's going to continue visiting and I wouldn't be shocked at all if this comes down to Penn State, Ohio State, probably Michigan too. Uh, but but without a doubt, I mean, he's he's on pace to be a really, really highly coveted prospect, likely a top 100 guy, I think. Fitz, I know you were, you were pretty high on him as well, right? Yeah, high on him as well. I believe he came to camp last year, um, and it was mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty good. So um, it's going to be tough to beat Ohio State there. Like it's yeah. – uh, let's just look at the, realis the realistic uh, aspect of things as a kid from – from Ohio, that's going to be uh, essentially pursued by everyone, and usually those kids end up in Ohio State. Interesting guy here. The last one I have on my list is Rowan Byrne. Um, five and a half games he said on his highlights says five and a half games, so something, either an injury or didn't play for part of the year. Maybe a little bit under the radar, but what do you guys think of Rowan Byrne and his, uh, you know, his fit with Penn State or, or what you guys are interested with him, Ryan? Solid player. Camp at Penn State last year was uh, it was okay. I, I thought there were a couple interior guys who had better camps at Penn State last year than Rowan. I think he's certainly in the mix with a handful of guys we just talked about, Carroll and Josh Williams, and there will be a few others. Um, but right now, I'd probably lean towards a couple other guys that are mm -hmm. Penn State's maybe pushing a little bit harder for. But at the same time, he's a he's a New York player. He's visited multiple times and. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if uh, he, he wants to commit to Penn State, I think the staff would have a, a absolutely discuss it to say the least. It's interesting because in fits, this is how I want to kind of phrase this to you is, is Ryan is saying there may be some other guys that they're interested in. Um, but this is the thing that I think it's important to remember for fans and people watching this is like, this is still a good offensive line prospect. Penn mm -hmm. State has set a threshold of they take, they're, they're able to get some really, really good ones. Um, so he's in the mix. Definitely a player that can play at the college uh, level, right? We're not talking about somebody who. Um, oh, he's you know, a four-star player. Absolutely. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I agree. Yeah. I mean, he's he's got size. He's got a lot of things you like. He's a tough kid. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it we're we've, we're getting to that point on the offensive line. And of course, he's an interior guy. Um, so you're going to lean toward tackle as we always do. Um, you know, that uh, it's kind of what I'm thinking there in 2025. So be interesting to see where that where things stand with him coming out. Um, but yeah, I think there's a couple other guys that are um, also priorities there. Uh, anybody else that you guys want to talk about coming this weekend? I, that's what I have for uh, people we have highlights for. But is there anybody else that you're interested in or, or any last nuggets about this weekend that you want to convey to fans? Ryan? Not really. I mean, I think I think Jaden Blair's out there, right? I mean, that that one's I think been pretty well discussed publicly. He's a top fifty guy, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll see where things go there. Penn State's already has one safety committed. Obviously, Kanoa Kanoa Winston, as Sean brought up, is going to be in the mix. But um, you know, for the most part, I think we I think we hit on the top guys. Fitz, uh, what are we getting out of here on today? What's coming up for you that you want to talk about over at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com to continue this conversation? Yeah, wrapping up stuff for Junior Day this weekend. Uh, of course, uh, I think I, I think Ryan hit it that uh, maybe not as extensive a visitor list this weekend, but also they they're trying to do three weekends in a row, so maybe go up down a little bit and back up on uh, on February third. So we're going to be watching that. Uh, I'm going to be trying to figure out what's out there in terms of defensive end um, because, like I said, it's it, I, Ryan says it's not a killer for Ari Watford, and I would agree with not a killer, but it certainly 
not great. Like he oh, was it hurts. He was, yeah. So it, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you did. I'm not putting words in your mouth. Actually, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I'm just not going to overthink it in January. Like it, that's a, that's a great. I want to be. Sh- yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're going to see more guys uh, come onto the radar, especially the athletic, you know, it, it takes time for athleticism to catch up, you know, to uh, or size and athleticism to catch up. We're going to see what happens. The first guys are not always the best guys, but uh, I think Ari Watford, I think Ari Watford stings a little bit more than Zaheer Mathis. I'll say that. Fair. Definitely. By the way, uh, something else going on right now. We, you have the chance to talk to us here on the show for 49 minutes. Uh, but if you want to continue that conversation on the Blue White Illustrated message board, there is a Thursday chat thread where you can ask questions and these guys will get you some of the answers as best they can. So if you've got thoughts, you've got questions, maybe you want some of those deets that we don't always talk about here on the show, that's where you're going to go get the first uh, salvo of info. So subscribe right now to bluewhiteillustrated.com. And as I uh, tell you about here on the show, two months for a dollar when you use the code PSU1, we're giving you an extra little uh, bump in, in the free tryout period so you can figure out if you want to be a part of the message board for life. Because once you go in, you don't really get back out. Uh, that's what's going on. We have all kinds of other stuff going on here on the YouTube channel. If there's another commit this weekend, we will have breaking news for you when that happens. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. That's Ryan Snyder, Sean Fitz. We are talking about Penn State football recruiting, but we'll talk to you later. Later.